Father Lord, um, thank you for this bright new day. We thank you that we have a reason to wake up early, to come to your house, Lord, to meet with you and to encounter you, Lord, this morning. Father, we want to thank you. We are thankful, we are grateful that you are our God. We are thankful and grateful that you call us to be your holy people. Not that we deserve, but through the work of the cross, through the blood that Jesus shed, Lord, that today we are thankful and grateful that we have this relationship with you. Lord, fill us, fill us that we be in awe of how glorious, how wonderful, how holy is your love for us. We want to thank you for your great love, great, great love for us. I just pray that as we worship, we'll grasp how high, how deep, how wide, how long is your love for your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's praise our God. Amen. You inhabit. You inhabit the praises of your people. You delight. You delight in the glory of your Son. In the love of the Father we will worship. In the kingdom of God we find our hope. The wonder, the wonder of your love will break the chains that bind us. The power of your touch releases us to worship. Sing out to God, sing hallelujah. With all we are, we will worship you. Holy is your name, holy is your name, oh God. We sing again. You inhabit the praises of your people. You inhabit the praises of your people. You delight in the glory of your Son. In the love of the Father we will worship. In the kingdom of God we find our hope. The wonder of your love will break the chains that bind us. The power of your touch releases us to worship. Sing out to God. Sing Together we'll lift the name of Jesus. And together we'll lift the name of Jesus. And together we'll sing of your great love. We will join with the angels and praise you. May our voices be pleasing to you, God. The wonder your love will break the chains that bind us the power of your touch releases us to worship sing out to god sing hallelujah with all we are we will worship you holy is your name holy to God, sing hallelujah, with all we are, we will worship you, holy is your name, holy is your name, sing out to God, sing hallelujah, with all we are, we will worship you. Holy is your, holy is your name, holy is your name, 
oh God. Yes, Lord, holy is your name. And Father, we pray as well as we grasp how wide and long and how high and deep your love is for us. May we also grasp how pure, how holy, how perfect, how bright and glorious your holiness is. Deserving of our worship, deserving of our fear. Let our hearts bow down to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. For he is great. He is sovereign. He is almighty. He is all-powerful. And yet, he is compassionate. He is kind. He is loving. Oh, Lord, we thank you and we love you for who you are.
sing holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Lord, we adore you. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Brothers and sisters, if you feel defeated, if you feel overcome, remember the name of Jesus' is power. He's breath and living water. And commit all your difficulties and your troubles, your failures, your weaknesses to Him, to the King of kings, to the Lord of lords, who has an eye for the weak and the poor, for the oppressed. So let us humble ourselves and run to our God, who has a heart for those who mourn, who are weak, who are poor in spirit. Let us see the glory of our God, His holiness, that there is none beside Him, that upon him we will build our life. Upon him we will build our faith. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. You open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every name. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one that could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. We sing holy. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. You open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. We sing again, worthy of every song. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. So lift the name of Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one that could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. We sing holy. Oh. 
holy there is no one like you there is none beside you you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those I will build my life I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you, O oh Lord, and I will not be shaken. Father, the reason that we can put our trust and our love in you is because you say that your love is stronger than anything, whether it is present, whether it's in the past, whether it's sickness, whether it's um, danger, whether it's angels, demons, there is nothing that can separate us from your love. Father, thank you that, Lord, your love is everlasting. Your love is unconditional. Your love is there to rescue us from the kingdom of darkness into your light. Father God, we thank you that you called us to meet with you every Sunday. Father, to set a day apart to meet with you, to encounter you, to see truly you are holy. And Father, when we see you, Father, we realize where we are and how you have called us to walk in accordance to your way. And Father, when we have erred, against you. Father, when we sin against you, Father, we want to run away and yet, Lord, you say, if we confess our sin, you are faithful and just and will forgive our sins, not only that, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so you and you alone cleanse us from all unrighteousness and you put your Holy Spirit in us so that we can continue to live this life that you've called us. So that, Father, Lord, you who began a good work in us will bring it to perfection. And Father, we are the one who is relying on you every single day to work in our lives. Father, as a church, we want to stand here and say, we are your living sacrifice. Father, we want to open up our lives for you to change us, for you to work in us. Father, if there's any attitude in our minds, any words in our heart, any actions that we've taken out, Father, any, any part of us that is 
against you. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will search us and find out if there's any wicked way in us so that, Lord, we can repent, so that, Father, we can get rid of it, so that, Father, once again, we belong to you completely and wholly, and, that, Father, we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you that, Lord, you do not give up on us. You continue to work on us. You continue to mold us. You continue to change us. And that is our hope in you. That, Lord, your love is a firm, firm foundation that we stand on. And you love us because we belong to you. And it is just that truth that because we belong to you, you love us. You are our Father. You are our Father. And you love us, true and true. So as your people, Father, we look to you and we know that we will find grace at your throne. So brothers and sisters, come before God and meet with him. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We have a time of offering now. Uh, it is a joyous thing to make an offering to God. We acknowledge that everything that we have comes from God, and He Himself provided for everything we are. I think the realization that everything that we have comes from God is such a joyful thing, but it is also a thing that we say nothing that we have belongs to us, and we want to give to Him. So I pray that this time in your offering, when you give up your tithes and offering, there will be a joyful act. Oh, Father, I'm trusting in you. I also want to invest in your kingdom's work. I want more people to come and experience that firm foundation that is found in God and God alone. So let this be a joyful and cheerful heart as we give unto God. flows like a river washing over me found of heaven love of Christ overflow in me thank you Jesus Set me free. Christ, my Savior, rescued me. Take this life, dear.
you, Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross for us. Thank you for opening the way so that we can come before you. Father God, we thank you that, Lord, you have provided for everything that we need. Our breath itself, the energy that we have, the jobs that we have, the provision that you have given us in every single way. Father, thank you that, Lord, you are the only one that we rely on. Father, as we give to you these offerings, may you be pleased. May you use it. May you multiply it for your kingdom. Father, that, Lord, that many more people can hear of your gospel. Father, we pray that, Lord, as a church, that you give us the creativity, you give us the um, your wisdom. Father, you give us the courage to be able to share your word, not just on Sundays, but, Lord, every single day of our lives, in our workplace, Father, in our homes, in, with our neighbors, Father, in whoever that we encounter, that, Lord, our lives will speak about the salvation that comes from Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that, Lord, that you provide so wonderfully, bountifully, richly for us and help us to live our lives for your kingdom's sake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to come. Um, I, I know that you have to defrost your windscreen this morning, isn't it? Very cold. But I hope that you have warm fellowship here. Uh, rather than standing up and greeting everybody, just talk to the person next to you and say, you're very welcome. I'm glad you're here in church worshipping with us today. And uh, it's good. And stay for tea and coffee later on. Um, uh, I don't know who's making tea and coffee, uh, but it's a warm cup and uh, encourage one another. I know that many of you had been having head colds and flus and all that kind of thing. Is that right? Is that correct? I know um, certainly I have heard a lot of people who have sniffles and so on. Uh, but I hope that um, God will heal you. God will make you strong again. So even though the outside body is fading away, the inside spirit is strong and that we can rejoice in God. So the next item, um, for care groups, we recommend that you, can, you would attend care groups. So if you are primary school, you have no care groups. You have kinetics on Saturday. If you are secondary school, there is WOW on Saturday in, uh, in the Manor House, uh, starting at 1.30. Yeah? And then if you are university students, there's Crossroads on Wednesday, starting at 6. Okay, between 6 and 6.30, don't be late. The next, <laughs> if you are older than that, there is Gravity. If you're a young professional working, there's Gravity meeting in town at 7 on, uh, on Thursday, 4 o'clock. Oh, no, Thursday, okay. And then for those of you who are uh, considering yourself older than young adults, there is um, there's a united care group. Uh, Elder Tommy is the leader. And I look after uh, Logos on a Wednesday evening that we meet together. At the moment, we're studying the Feast of the Old Testament as well. See, wow, you're doing it earlier than, than the, the group. And we have also Sunday service as well. So anyone that's in care, uh, not in care group, please come. Um, we know that the Abbey Street um, English Mandarin service is still on. Uh, they had a very successful meeting last week. Many people come and, you know, um, they hope to reach out to the second generation, um, local born, and as well as to the university students that are in town. Um, let us continue to remember them in prayer. Next item. Uh, I just want to let you know that the WOW uh, Sunday School is starting again. We're going to do the Feast of the Tabernacles today. So those of you who are in sec secondary school, please come at 11.45. And that's it. Okay, let's pray for Elder Tommy. Okay, so think of him when you're praying for him. So let's pray for him. Father God, we want to pray for Elder Tommy as he's preaching today. Father, will you indwell in his heart and anoint him and help him to speak powerfully for your word. Father, I pray that, Lord, his word will be life-giving and that, Lord, many people will be blessed and that, Lord, the words will transform our lives. We thank you that, Lord, each week you come and meet with us through worship and also through the preaching of your word. 
Father, we uplift him. And Father, we give, ask that, Lord, he will find joy when he's preaching the message. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you. Elder Mimi, can you hear me? I am going to... Yes. I actually never like speaking from, from up there. So I got permission to speak from down here. Is that okay? I, I, I may be, well, I'll get, it takes some time to get, for me to get used to it. And you might need some time to get used to it. But uh, we'll see how it goes. I think it's, it'll be overall more comfortable. Good morning. See, okay, yeah. Um, these, I have three pictures to show you. And I want you to tell me the common thing about the three pictures. Is that okay? So there are three pictures. The first is, I think the picture is quite clear, so it's a cow, right? Um, so there's a cow. Then um, there is uh, f smoke, yeah? Um, there's a smoke. And then um, it's, what's that? Macaroni, yeah, macaroni, yeah, macaroni. So, who can guess, what's the common thing about the three of them? Yes? I bet, I bet Leon knows. Go on, tell me. I bet you know. Come on, I know you think outside the box. Yo, say it, say it. How can you tell the macaroni's in Japan? No, there's no Mount Fuji there, no? Okay. Any, any other one? Anyone else? I thought you had the answer. Yeah? Yeah? Oh, brown. Okay. It is a common thing. Br brown. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Any, anything else? Let me give you a hint, right? So let me, let me give you a hint. Um, so what if I showed you this picture instead? What's that? What's that? The? Golden calf, yeah? At the time of uh, when Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments, uh, went up to meet God on Mount Sinai, and he was given the Ten Commandments, the people down there having you know, experienced God coming out of Egypt and so on, unfortunately went to create a cow, um, a golden calf. So, holy cow? Holy cow, maybe? Okay, right. Now, the next picture, now, and, and I know that young audience is here, but this is, this is not too bad, but is a term, holy smokes. Does anyone use that? Ho holy, ho holy, okay. Right, so can you guess what the last one is then? Yeah? Simpson likes to say this, holy macaroni. Right. I think our understanding of the word holy, I mean, of course, as Christians, you know what the term holy means. And you attribute that to God, and you know that, as again, we mentioned about Moses um, meeting God, burning bush, the place is a holy ground, he was asked to take off his sandals, and so on. You know the term means something about good, perfect, very good, sacred. Uh, so I know you know that. But I think one or two other uh, concepts about holiness might be amiss. So as I mentioned in the, in the opening slides, I mean, very often people use the term holy, and it's, you can write it, you can look it up in the dictionary. The third definition often is something about exclamation or to intensify. So holy, whatever it is, you know. And people even substitute that with curse words and so on. So holy is, you know, still retains some kind of awesomeness in it. Unfortunately, just not attributed to God. We know, you know, that I know, and I know you know, that God, of course, is holy. And you might think about people who are holy, right? You might think about people who are holy. So think of people who you think are holy. Anyone? No? Can't think of anyone who, holy, who's holy. <laughs> Let me suggest a few. Um, Mother Teresa was made a saint. And many people regard her as very, um, you know, obviously charitable and ethnic. And I 
give her all my due respects for the work she has done and, and her faith. Um, I used to be a Buddhist, so I would have used to revert this guy, the Dalai Lama, as holy. Actually, that's not really him. It's from Madame Tussaud, but anyway, <laughs> the, it's very good. Um, holy, we attribute to people who seem to be very, very good. But is that really the case? What if I told you that actually, when it comes to just us as commoners, if we can call it that, that God sees you as holy. God sees each and every single one of you, if you are a Christian, as holy. Because that's exactly how he addresses the people in various churches when he planted them at the beginning. And, you know, if someone came up to you, so let me ask you, right? Vinny. Hey, you're holy. What's your immediate reaction? What's your immediate reaction? Don't, don't censor it. Oh, sorry, there are two Vinnies, sorry. I forgot, you're Vinny and Vinny. This is, he's Vinny as well, sorry. I didn't do that on purpose, gosh. Yeah, what's your immediate reaction? Not worthy. Not worthy. Or, you know, you, you must be wrong. Or you must be out of your mind. You, you know, you're, you're crazy. Call me holy? I don't think so. Well, let me go through a few verses today with you to try to see whether you can accept the fact that even if you don't see yourself as holy, God sees you as holy. And I don't mean to say that therefore you are perfect or uh, that you have nothing, no room for improvement in this lifetime. But I do want you to go away taking the message, the notion that God sees you as holy. Let's read a few passages together, a few verses together. Please read with me. Uh, Ephesians verse 1 to 8. Is that okay? And I'm sorry you can only read it from one screen, yeah? Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. One, two, three. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realm with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. Okay, let us pray. Father Lord, we want to thank you we want to thank you for your amazing grace that you lavish upon us, undeservedly unmerited, not by our own good works, but by the faith that even us, that comes from you. And Father Lord, help us to know the difference between us and those without you. Let us know the difference and have the assurance today that you see us as holy and set apart and different. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So, really, the message is very simple. I want to get into the notion in your head and your hearts that holy can be defined in a different way. We mentioned that definition of holy could be something about, you know, being very good and exalted, absolutely perfect in righteousness and goodness, ethically, morally, and so on. And of course, we usually attribute that to God. We might say that people who are dedicated God to God are holy, or dedicated to some ultra perfection of, you know, uh, ethical code like the Dalai Lama and Buddhism, etc., are holy. And then, of course, the definition that we mentioned just now that you know people use it to exclaim this and that because they think it exacerbates or increases the intensity of the exclamation, holy. X, Y, Z. But from God's perspective, 
he not only defines what is holy, but he also makes it as such. He not only defines what is holy from his point of view, but he can actually make it happen. Right? So in the case of you know, the people who want to be holy, um, and I've mentioned I've, I was a Buddhist, and I tried to make myself holy and holier and holiest, and didn't work. Um, God is able. And I think that's the difference. And maybe the first thing is to redefine what is holy. So let me suggest to you a very simple definition. You can redefine holy as separated. Separated. Just different. In the Old Testament, and you know that there's the, the Leviticus laws and the priesthood, the sacrifice of cows and pigeons and so on, etc. Ritual cleansing, um, staying away from leprosy and so on, etc. Right? I mean, really, is it to stay away from the disease or, you know, or the bodily problems and so on, etc. Or mold and... No. The whole idea is that in that context and culture at the time, whereas every other nation didn't bother with these things, God wants his people, the Israelites, to show that they're different from the rest. So really, separated from actually is so that you can show that you're different from. Now, I should clarify. Whilst every one of us are unique and different in God, but... Clearly, the key similarity is that we are all, well, for those of us who are, Christians. And I don't mean for you to be, therefore, a different Christian from the next Christian in the sense that, well, I better do things which are more outrageous and more whatever, unique. I mean different from those who are without God. That should be the difference that people should be able to see, that you should be able to see. You know, in fact, in fact, I will say that despite our different ages and ethnicities and so on, etc., that to me, and I think to God certainly, you're all the same. Because of the identity that you have in Jesus Christ. And you might say, still wonder to yourself, but is that really the case? Am I really different from the world? Don't I have sin? I thought sin is in my nature. Sin being in my nature means that if I'm honest with myself, if I'm frank with myself, actually, our natural tendency is to sin. Agree? And if our natural tendency is to sin, and we follow that line of thinking, we go, well, in the end, maybe I'm no different from even people who are not Christian. Sometimes we get accused by others outside and saying, but you're no different from us. So how do we reconcile the two? How is it that we are different and not different? Well, I think, you know, we need to be able to understand God's perspective, how he sees it in his sight. What does it mean? Wholly different? Really? So you look at a group of people, and this is a snapshot of a meeting in our church and so on, and you see the people gathered here. And I think you should be able to see that they appear to be worshipping. There's a team on the stage, and, and they're probably singing. Uh, it's a still photograph, so you don't know, but you can probably rightly assume in this case. People um, giving thanks to God, some people raising hands, and so on. But suppose I gave you another picture. What's this? Yes? Is it a group of... Also Asian-looking people, <laughs> also looking at something or, you know, heading a certain direction, standing. I don't know if any of them raising their hands. Could they be worshipping God? Mm. You don't know? Okay. Uh, I just randomly took this off. I uh, looked up crowd on Wikimedia and found this. So it's actually a comic market in Japan. So it is, this one's from Japan, Leon. <laughs> um, it's a comic market. People are gathered there to buy and sell and exchange comics and so on. And really, at first glance, you might not see a difference, and that's okay. Sometimes, looking at Christians and non-Christians, you have to kind of 
you know, play a game with yourself and say, well, you know, are there differences? Can you spot the difference? How many differences can you spot? Come on, let's play. Uh, anyone spot a difference? Yes, Maggie. The kitchen thing. The baking tray. Oh, the baking tray. Yes, very good, very good, very good. And there's a seven order. I was playing last night. Anyway, anyway sorry. Sometimes we say that should it be that people find it hard to spot the difference? Should the difference be so hard to spot? And I suppose the application today is I hope not. I hope not. But let's look at what the Bible says. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God. By the will of God. It is God's will that he was made an apostle, even though he was, he said, and he condemned himself as the worst sinner in Timothy. But yet, by God's amazing grace, he was chosen as an apostle. And chosen to reach out to the Gentiles, to the church, uh, to, the, to, the, to the people, and to set up churches, outside of Israel. So Ephesus, Corinth, and so on, etc., the different places. He knows his mission is to go to the non-Christians there and to preach God's salvation to them. He's absolutely sure that this is God's will to go to the people whom God has already selected. I will come to that. To God's holy people, in Ephesus or the regions around there, to those who have faith in Jesus Christ. So before you knew God, God knew you. Before you knew who was Jesus Christ, he died for you. Before you realized even that you were a sinner, God had already selected you. And this is therefore the grace and peace that comes from him and through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we give him praise. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us, you see, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Perspectives are really, really powerful. If you see a thing a certain way, you believe it to be true. God sees you as holy and blameless in his sight. That's not to say that he can't see the sin in us. He can. He absolutely can. I mean, you know, there's no better barometer for holiness. God sees into people's hearts. So why is it that he chose to see us as holy? Well, because he recognizes that we actually were chosen from before the creation of the world. We're basically from out of this world. If you look at John 17, Jesus prays for his believers, for his apostles, disciples. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Your origin, your very origin, you're born from above, from the Spirit from out of this world, to come into this world and represent God here today, 2018, January 14th. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. This was planned right from the beginning. Planned right from the beginning that even before the creation world, Jesus Christ was the lamb who was slain so that we can be his children. And this is in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. So not because we have done good, not because we have done, I don't know, how many shoeboxes and how many runs of hampers. They're all good, but never good enough. Not because we come to church every Sunday, which you should, but it's never good enough. Because in our heart, in our inner being, our motives, our attitudes are still far from the holiness he expects us. That's why I failed to be a Buddhist. 
uh, uh, succeed in being Buddhist. I failed to get to holiness because I realized I just can't do it. No matter how hard I try, you try, you can't get to absolute purity. Doesn't mean you have to stop trying. But I think you have to just start to start with God and then ourselves. God first, us second. It's what Jesus did. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. It is what God has done that makes the whole difference. It is what God has done to your sin that, has makes, that makes the whole world of a difference. Your sin is dealt with because of the cross. So really, there's only one difference. There's only one difference, right? Because non-Christians can do a lot of charitable work. How many of you know, you know uh, the Noble Foundation? Or, no, sorry, not the Noble Foundation. Christina Noble Foundation. Not the Noble Foundation. Christina Noble. Anyone know Christina Noble? Have you met her, maybe? Yeah, I met her at the NCT testing in, in Font Hill. <laughs> Just bumped into her waiting for my car. She was waiting for her car. Then she started talking to me and said, ask where I'm from and so on, etc. And uh, she must have thought I was a kid or something. <laughs> Christina Noble is, uh, uh, you know, is... Has, has done a lot of charitable work in places like Vietnam and Southeast Asia and so on, uh, orphanages and so on. And she's quite discouraged because at the time when she started, um, you know, her efforts, she didn't get much support from especially religious orders, I think, you know. But she's done a lot of those kind of work. But I don't know, actually, and I didn't get into the conversation with her. I, I, mean, I still have contact number. She gave her, me her card for some reason whether she actually is saved or not. I don't know. I don't know. And Christians may very often stumble and fall, as we know, as I know too well myself. So really, there's only one difference. And the one difference is, is there sin or no sin in a person's life? And I don't mean to say that, therefore, as Christians, therefore, today, you have absolutely no sin. You know and I know that's not true. But the real difference, really, is whether you can be deemed as to be without sin because your sin has been wiped away and cleansed and forgiven because you have Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in you versus you're still holding on to your sin because you've rejected Jesus Christ. And so the real difference comes from your view of the cross. And I don't know how many are not Christians here today. I, think, I don't see any non-Christians that I can know of anyway today. If you're not a Christian, the whole difference this makes is your sins can be forgiven once and for all. Your past sins, your current sins, your future sins, even the sins you're going to commit because of the death of Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sins through that. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. You either have it or you don't, death or life. And even for those of us as Christians, in the beginning of a year, and you know it's already the second week and so on, I think sometimes we just need to be reminded that our sins are dealt with. And therefore, we shift the perspective to not simply just trying and striving to be resolute. Resolute to conquer sin by ourselves, But to know that sin has already been conquered and simply humbly accept forgiveness. To confess our sins. To acknowledge our sins. To, to say to God, Yes, I am a sinner, but thank you for forgiving me. As I say, you know, it's the 14th of January, 2018. And, you know, for the last week or 
maybe not last week, but the week before that, you know, usually in the first week, people still wish each other at the workplace and colleges a happy new year and so on. And then what happens? Is it still a happy new year still? <laughs> Is it still a happy new year? Or have you started back to fight amongst yourselves, or spouses, and, or parents to children? I've had my first fight with Isaac for this year. Uh, you know, I was like, why don't you sleep, dude? <laughs> I've got a headache. <laughs> right? Um, have things in work start to overwhelm you? And you react to them by frustration, anxiety, panic, depression. Many of you are students, so you'll have mock exams now. So do you have peace? <laughs> Whilst the rest of the class may have no peace, can you have peace? Can you be different in this year, in 2018? I hope you can. I sincerely pray to God you can where the world actually is full of atrocities and tragedies. I don't know how many of you know about the news about uh, the car park in Liverpool. You know, on New Year's Eve, a whole car park, you know, capacity of 1,600, and you know, the 1,200 cars or 1,400 cars just went up in flames. Boom, one car burst, and then it's like a movie, you know, blockbuster. I just can't. You know, imagine to f what it was a the car owner, you know, probably parked there to go to somewhere and so on, etc. And you would, the last thing you'd expect is for your car to blow up, along with the rest of the others. And then only two days ago, someone who was promoted uh, in a job um, was impaled on, a, uh, impaled on a gate, on an on a electric gate or, or whatever gate on an apartment block. I don't, I don't know, it's malicious. He was just out celebrating, and next thing you know, people found him dead. and loads of other things. The world has no joy, no peace, no hope. Can we, can we represent God in our communities, in this world, to have joy, to have patience, peace, to have faith in a place of no joy, no, no peace, no patience, no faith? Can we? Can we be set apart as per God's will, knowing that our sins have been dealt with, and live accordingly, not by our own efforts, but simply, humbly asking God, thanking God for his forgiveness of our sins through and through. I wish you all a holy new year. Let us pray. Lord, we just want to sing of your praises because you're so good. You, you've dealt with our sin. The moments and times in which I felt helpless and powerless and weak, and they're so real, and I struggle, Lord. It's only day 14, and... I've already sinned countless times. I go back to the same bad habits. I, I reveal the same attitude. I still have pride. But God, thank you that you being the one and only holy God of the whole universe chose to change us. To change us from the inside out. First, through the revelation of your Son, Jesus Christ, giving us the faith to believe in Him and to know our sins are forgiven. And secondly, for your Spirit to be in us, to guide us, to prompt us, to be counterintuitive to our sinful nature.
sinful nature can only be dealt with by allowing God to take over. Be drunk with the Holy Spirit. So Lord, we want to praise you. We want to give you thanks. We want to thank you for making us holy, for separating us from darkness and from sin. Making a difference to my life, our lives, and introducing this difference to the world. We thank you that, that all we have to do is to affirm this, acknowledge it, humbly come before you in repentance and with gratitude to receive your grace and mercy. Sisters, do you sense that God has called you to be holy? By His will, He has set you apart to be different. 
in this world. Whether it's in your family, whether in your school or college, university, or workplace, your society, your neighborhood, God has called you to be different. Will you continue to open your heart to Him, to allow Him to change you, to mold you, so that you can be used by Him, to represent Him? Are you amazed at how God has taken a life and changed it so that your sins are dealt with? And that we really live joyfully, peacefully, reconciled to God, and faithfully for the rest of our days. Let us be filled with wonder and praise Him. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power. Lord, we give you praise because you deserve, you are worthy, you alone are worthy of our praise for the miraculous work you've done in our lives, forgiving us of our sins and making us different. May you guide us through and through each and every single moment, each and every single day month and year. And brothers and sisters, be encouraged to know that God has set you apart and you, you can live as such. Please stand with me to receive his blessing. So may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of Father God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every single one of us this day, this week, and until he returns. Amen. God bless.